Thank you so much for staying with us. Now, let's segue to review and assess the President Muhammad Buhari's administration, especially when he took office in 2015. He promised to diversify Nigeria's oil denominated economy by investing more in agriculture and encouraging farming. The government aimed at food self sufficiency and increased foreign exchange earnings. The president launched the Agricultural Promotion Policy, APP, which expired December 2020 to succeed the Agricultural Transformation Agenda Policy, launched in 2013 to his predecessor, Good Luck Jonathan. Like the ATA policy, Mr. Buhari's APP was designed to ensure the provision of the required legislative and agricultural framework, macro policies, security, infrastructure, and institutional mechanisms to allow farmers access essential input, finance information, agricultural services, and markets. Now, with only a few days left for the administration to leave office on Monday, May 29, has the Buhari-led administration lived up to its professed commitment to developing the agricultural sector and indeed investment in the sector uh, when it took office in 2015. These are some of the questions that we will be answering on the show this morning. And to do that is uh, Dr. Emmanuel Osewe Akubo. He is an economic historian and lecturer at Obafemi Awulowo University. Good to have you on the show. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for joining us. Well, let's dive in by first getting your overview of the performance of this administration in the agricultural sector. Well, um, for those of us who are uh, economic historians, especially specializing in this area of agriculture, and knowing the potentials of the Nigerian, uh, the, the, of Nigerian area, especially as it relates to agriculture, I would say that the, the administration has not fared well in the area of um, agriculture. Uh, because we, if you look at the uh, history of uh, the area, you understand that it is not a country, the, Nigeria is not a country that should uh, be importing at all, especially when you look at uh, the fact that this is a country that has a total of 90, 79 million hectares of agricultural land. Unfortunately, only 44% of that is being cultivated. And uh, with so much uh, water to power, uh, to power even uh, um, irrigation farming, so and good uh, rainfall, of course, one would have expected that with, again, the resources at the disposal of the government, uh, we will be talking of food sufficiency uh, at this stage. But unfortunately, we cannot boast uh, of that now. Mm. It's rather unfortunate. Quite unfortunate indeed. Uh, but let's also look at some available data showing that the sector grew at an average of 15% in the past seven years of the government. Uh, that's an analysis of the country's gross domestic product. Compared to that of uh, the Obasanjo tenure, it grew by 133%. And then by 19.1% under President Musa Yaradua's short tenure and 22.2% under President, former President Goodluck Jonathan's government. What factors do you think led to this abysmal performance under the Buhari administration? Well, the, the administration actually came in with uh, so much promises, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the area of uh, food sufficiency. And I think it was with that in mind that the the, uh, the Ankoborua thing was uh, brought in by the administration to help uh, make sure that this uh, they're able to drive very well the, the uh, agricultural sector. But unfortunately, we know, the, like we say, the Nigerian factor not really targeting those that ought to uh, have been it uh, who, those that are really on the field cultivating 
then also not having uh, the resources getting down to them as well. Of course, we also have other things. The government not really been prepared for it and the issue of uh, insurgency. And I think that really uh, was a major thing that really brought down the food production during uh, this period. So much so that if you look at the statistics available to us uh, up to this moment, we will be shocked that even pumping so, so much money into agriculture, yet nothing is uh, coming out of it. So we say poor management, then uh, issue of insurgency, which uh, has made those who, are, who ought to be uh, on the field working, uh, not going to the field. Mm. A sad, a sad development there. But uh, if you hear some analysis from some uh, stakeholders in the agricultural sector, they will tell you that uh, there is a bright spot in this government, that is the Buhari's government, especially in the area of rice and maize production, as data shows both increased uh, significantly and uh, Nigeria's yearly production figures have been the highest in the last five years. And this, you know, high production production streak between 2014 and 2020 has taken Nigeria to the first and second spot amongst rice paddy and maize producers in Africa respectively. But despite the increase in production and all of this uh, bright spot, uh, the, the prices of these commodities have skyrocketed significantly when compared to previous years and previous administrations. Is there a missing link somewhere? That, that was what that, that is what I would have asked you when you talked about so much. Yes, we know that we cannot deny the fact that the government started very well. Like I said, our fund, you know, and that we must because yes, before now we already had this indigenous uh rice milling uh outfit in various especially around the middle the the middle belt. And of mm. Indeed, okay. looking at uh, the performance of this administration, that's President Muhammad Buhari's administration in the area of agriculture, and trying to see where the missing link is, especially when you look at all of the policies and all of the initiatives taken by this government to boost that sector. Emmanuel, are you with us, Dr. Emmanuel? All right, we'll link back up with Dr. Emmanuel, but of course it is a very interesting conversation, especially as power begins to, or power is about to change hands come May 29, that's on Monday, we will be seeing another uh, captain taking over the ship. And uh, it's very important to analyze the bottlenecks, look at how well this administration has done, look at some of the areas they could have performed better so that we can set the agenda for the incoming administration of uh, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel, if you can hear me, I'd like to hear your uh, final thoughts on that particular issue. Yeah, I'm still with you. Are you... Are you with me? Yes, go ahead, please. Hello? I can hear you perfectly. Okay, it looks like there's a, a missing link. The missing link is now in the conversation between myself and we would fix that because this is a conversation that must be had. Yeah, I'm with you. Yes, go I'm ahead, please. Okay. All right. <laughs> but if you look at the fact that uh, some few weeks ago, we had some farmers complaining about the fact that, uh, yes, there are several policies, there are interesting initiatives, but when it comes to implementation, there is a big kettle of fish, there is a loophole, there is a, a gap that needs to be bridged so that uh, it's not just about having these policies on paper, there is effective implementation to the stakeholders. Thank you for joining us again, Dr. Emmanuel. Dr. Emmanuel, if you can hear me, I'd like you to land your thoughts on the missing link between uh, the policies and all of the rice, paddy, the maize 
uh, you know, the initiatives that have come in that regard and why the prices of these commodities are still very high. All right. We would we'll probably have to uh, leave that conversation there and come back to pick up another conversation. But it is still looking at the agricultural sector and setting the pace for the next administration, even as we critique this current administration. We'll be right back after the break. Don't go anywhere.